I've, I got the book for meeting of the sorry, I'll call a meeting of the Nantucket Cemetery Commission to order for Wednesday, April 12th, 2023. I declare we have a quorum present. And the first item of business public or commissioner comments. Seeing no public comment, um, any commissioner comments? I have one uh, item. This just came um, to me the other day. This is uh, from uh, Mrs. Whaley, who has uh, who lives on Center Street somewhere, and um, her. Family bought a plot at uh, Newmore Cemetery. I have a picture of the uh, plot and so on. Mm -hmm. And her request, um, she wants to do a burial for, where is it? Uh, she, have, she has the remains of their only child and her husband and which he wants to endure in that site. Um, and so I uh, spoke with her and I said, we would be meeting today in terms of, you know, whatever. Um, and I'm assuming that uh, she has the um, receipt for the lock that- she, $35? Yeah. <laughs> And um, so I told her that we would consider it today at our meeting and I would let her know and uh, so she could go ahead and proceed. She also wants to put a monument on. I gave her a year mm -hmm. number and uh, so, yeah. um, so anyway, I would um, ask for approval, I guess, of the commission uh, to do the earnment at New, New North Cemetery um, and to be scheduled whenever she's she's not here on island now, but apparently she lives at uh, 52 Center Street. What's her name? Whaley. Um, w H A L L E one? Yes. Elizabeth Whaley. At 52 Center Street. Well, I would move to approve that. Right. I second it. Okay, we have a motion to second. Any discussion? Um, we'll have to approve a monument. We'll have to, yeah. I, I, I told her that uh, we would need an enumerment form. Mm -hmm. And um, when she was ready. Yeah. We also was, need to see what the monument looks like. Exactly. I told her that too. So, and uh, she's I kind of work with you, Patterson Stone Coating for whatever stone she wants. So. Okay. Oh, all in favor? No. I'm sorry, Lee. Let's do it by roll call <clears throat> since we're on Zoom, and then that'll take care of that'll take care of the roll call. Okay, roll call vote. Barbara. Aye. Aye. Brian. Aye. Scott. Aye. Chair votes off. Okay. Good. It's being recorded, Alan. It's kind of moment. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> thank you for keeping me on track. So while we're doing that, you know, is this a moment to approve my paperwork for the internet for Alan? Yes. Okay. So we have another uh, request for an internet at Focus Center here. This is Fran. Uh, she's going to be putting um, Al's ashes into Focus Cemetery and a lot and she chain. And um, we have an application here. Uh, so the the motion or sorry <laughs> would entertain a motion to uh, approve the internment. I'll move to approve that. I have a second. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, um, okay, Lee? Aye. Aye. Barbara? Aye. Fran? <laughs> Aye. Scotty? Chair votes on Great. Okay, so you're all set then? Set. Excellent. I'm really quite thoughts. happy about this. Yeah. And it's going to be May 1st or May 2nd? May 2nd. 
Tuesday. You want that as your that was a Tuesday? Tuesday, May 2nd at 11 in the morning. It's in my calendar. Great. While we're on the topic of North Cemeteries for a minute, mm -hmm. I really feel in the short time we have remaining, we should as a group go over and look at Old North Cemetery um, <laughs> just to be sure how we feel about it. Um, Scotty and I went there more than a month ago. Well, thank you. And the stone that had been cleaned and repaired and then subsequently fell over and broke. That's still lying there, although we agreed that we should. Mm -hmm. And then the other issue is the extremely unsightly wooden uh, sign. Right um, we, we, we need to make some decision about what to do about it because right now it's an eyesore. So either it should be replaced or it, a new, or it should be repainted or something. And I think the best thing we could do is really as a group for us to go there. Yes. Um, but we don't have much time left because I will be going away on the 24th. And when I get back, <laughs> Barbara will go. So is it possible for us to a field trip to Old North um, this coming week? When would you have to post it? Oh, you have to post it. It's 32 hours. It's three days, four days. It's too late to post it. When you, who's leaving first? I'm leaving on the 24th. Is it? And then Barbara after that? I'm not leaving until May 1st. Yeah. So we have time. But I'm, right. I'm coming back on the day Barbara leaves. Right, but we have time between now and the 24th. Yeah, next oh. week. Today's the 12th. All we need is three or four days. Oh, okay. So we can do it next week. Monday. 17? Monday the 17th? Yeah. Yeah. Monday the 17th? Um, that's Patriot's Day. It's a this, holiday. The 17th? I thought you said the 24th. I'm leaving. No, oh, she's leaving the 24th. So Monday the 17th. Does it matter if it's a holiday to anyone? What holiday is that? Patriot's Day. It's also tax day. No, 18 here is tax day, right? So my button that's stacked up on my calendar is tax day. See, that's what happens when you don't grow up in Massachusetts. You don't you don't recognize the specifics of holidays. So so what time should we meet then? What time works for us? Nine? Ten. You're working. Pretty much open. Ten. 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 Okay. Done. So we have to just remember to post. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll I'll uh, post that. Uh, make a note to post that uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I believe in the open meeting law. We could schedule field trips without it being a meeting, providing we don't discuss it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but if we make it a meeting, we can we can. Then we can, then we, can then we can talk. Okay. I, I I think we should post it. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I'll 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 post it tomorrow. Okay. And, same okay, so Monday the 17th mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock at mm -hmm. uh, uh, Old North. Old North, yeah. I just put on you. Good. Any other comments from the commission? Yeah. Okay, next yeah. item business is the approval of uh, minutes. We had two sets of minutes, one set from March 8th mm -hmm. and one from March 20th, which was our site visit at Office and so on. And um, those minutes were distributed. I would entertain a motion to approve. May I, may I make a motion to approve both sets of minutes? Yes. Okay. Now I think I both sets of minutes. Okay. Any discussion on the minutes? Any errors, omissions, anything? Okay. I, I just reread them. I think they're fine. Yeah. Okay. Roll call, Burlington. Barbara. Aye. Lee. Aye. Fran. Aye. Scotty. Aye. And Chair votes aye. Thank you, folks. Um, approval of lot sales since the last meeting. There have been no sales at Opus. I have had, uh, again, had several inquiries. Um, People who are on fire, um, Kathleen Matthews, for example, uh, called and she wanted to buy a lot. <laughs> I met with her um, last spring, I think it was, 
hours one minute mm -hmm. that would be out there and uh so she they definitely want to purchase a lot or possibly two lots and so what i told her we have um i believe 10 or 11 lots remaining currently but i did tell her that we would be doing uh, additional lots uh, and we'll talk about that in our meeting today when we're going to do that. But I'm anticipating that we'll have those lots laid out sometime by May. That's what I'm aiming for. So, um, that's, so that's let she wait. Yeah, right. So uh, she said, fine, she'll wait. I did email her a copy of the lot, the form, mm -hmm. but I told her that there's no sense in returning it until she picks up yeah. a lot. Right. So um, she said that uh, they will be coming in, I believe in June, they're going to be coming down and they'll meet with us or meet with me and, and we'll deal with that. So um, other than that, um, there are a couple of people who are waiting. Um, I met with uh, Bob King and his wife. And Bob what? King. Yeah. K I N G. Okay. And um, they are interested in a audit pulpus, um, but you know, I told them that we were going to be laying out some new ones and they thought they would wait until we get the new ones laid out and so on. So, so that's the report on uh, lot sales. Um, you know, Ken's here, right? Hmm? You know, Ken is here. Oh, hi, Ken. No, I didn't. <laughs> You're, you're mute. You're, you did. Okay, so uh, next item is the potential land swap uh, at Pulpus. And the, uh, let's see, Ken, do you have an update for us on? No, nope. uh, uh, what I've done is is I have shared the, uh, the proposed area that we talked about that all of you agreed upon with, uh, with Rick. Uh, and then I'm uh, testing. Sorry, Ken, we, we can't we can't quite understand you. Your your sound is garbled. Okay, is this better? Yeah, a yes. bit. Okay, I I I have shared the the layout with with Rick. He has not had a chance to get together with his clients. Uh, and as soon as we do, back to you, Alan. Let you know where the, where the situation is. I'm hopeful that that. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. Hopeful that you still can't hear you. I'm just he, said, he just said he that shared the layout. He shared the layout, yeah, the layout. and then he, the other employer has had time to meet with the client. Oh, okay, right. thank you. All right, and so so as as soon as he gets back to me, I'll get back to you, Alan, and let you know where we are. I'm I'm hopeful that we finally have come up with something that we can make work. Did you get that? As soon as he hears back, yeah, um, he's going to get in touch with you. Oh, good. And he hopes that they're going to come back to something that's going to be workable for him. I thought we already. <laughs> I was hoping we could vote positively and eliminate this subject from our agenda. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well I thought turn up okay. potential. You're, you're not the only one that hopes that. Yeah, OK. So oh, um, all right. So the status then is that we're we're still waiting to still hear. Waiting. We got that close, though. We actually met with the lawyer. Yeah. Right. Well, I've, Lee and I have been out there, what, three or four times <laughs> looking at them. And every time they're in a new set of stakes. Okay. Uh, Ken, th th this, this is Lee. Yep. What was the attorney's reaction to option E? The well, that, that, that's the one that, that I have spoken to him about. And uh, that, that is the one that I think that has the really the best chance of, of, of making this work. So it, it was a, it was a positive discussion, at least uh, the initial discussion. He just hasn't been able to get back to me yet after discussing with his clients. Okay, good, thanks. Can you refresh my memory on option E? Yeah. Yeah, hang on, What's folks. If um, oh, is it the we're, we're the one if we're out of the top. You would let me share my screen.
Um, I'm sorry. It wants me to sign in, but I thought I was already in, which is what's troubling me. Um, yeah, we're, 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 okay, I am in. Okay. And now, Charlie, if you'd let me. for the prompt. This is what I talked to. So that. Okay, I'm still. It's okay. I withdraw my question. Right, we don't. We, we yeah. don't need to look at. Yeah, that's we don't even. We don't have an agreement even. It looks like this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what? Well, what, what? What? What we did. Was we can't, there, there's a mature white oak. It's option E, and it has been distributed, and I'll put it into the minutes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a mature white oak about 20 feet from what would have been the new boundary. And so option E comes along uh, the old boundary to the far side of the white oak. By far, I mean far from the Higgs property, uh, establishes a corner. And then goes up with, with the equal area. Okay. 107 by 41. And, and Lee, the distance is 105 feet, as if we went 107 feet. So Leo redid did the plan. If we went 107 feet, we would be by the tree, cause some confusion. So he suggested that that the definition be 105 feet. So uh, 105. Not, it says 107 on here, but yeah. I know it's 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 it, but it, but he. The, he wants it at 105 feet so that, that it doesn't create a problem with respect to a marker at the end there and, and create, create a problem with the tree. Okay, okay so um, um, I think we, we are in agreement with the concept, mm -hmm. correct? <laughs> like if they came back with us and said, we want to go with this 100, yeah, right. 40, whatever. Yeah, exactly. We, would, we have uh, the approximate shape uh, presumably, whatever the distance, uh, the measurement they're getting along the Hicks property is 195. Yeah, by whatever that well, you know, 21 and 21. 27. Yeah, that clears their uh, both their encroachment and maybe a set okay. Okay. Anyway, so um, those are the dimensions. It's pretty much what we discussed when we were there. So uh, Ken, as soon as you have, um, um, as soon as you have any sort of yeah. word as to their agreement or not, or the terms and so on, you'll let me know, and I will notify the commission. Absolutely. Great. So we have an agreement, at least as far as the concept. Right. It's just a question of getting the details pinned down. Great. <laughs> Okay, anything else, Ken? No, if not, I will excuse myself from the meeting. You figured it out. Anything else from Ken? Yeah, no, I think we're all set. All right. Thank you, Ken. Thank Great. you. Thanks, Ken. So they get about 200 and something okay, right. square feet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm not totally incompetent, I'm just very slow. 41 to 107. Yeah. yeah. So, Ken's point about 105 is to clear the tree, and that will enable the surveyors to put a permanent bound at that corner. Oh, so, coming about here, but then we would extend. Yeah. It, it, and it would it, be the it, same, Barbara. It has to be the same square footage. It isn't the same square footage. I just multiplied it out. No, well, they'll, they'll survey it. So, 
that right. they'll be sure that it is. It yeah. has to be. Right. Okay, well, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. We're, we're near, yeah. near the end there. And um, as I said, I've been out a couple of times. I know we was out there and, and whatever. Um, and it is usable, more usable ground. That's the main thing I was concerned about. Um, so we can have yeah, whatever. So. Now, as far as the next steps, then, once we do get an agreement, <laughs> Uh, of course, then we have to get it all signed we too. But, also... Yeah, it could be. A... <laughs> Isn't it our job is to get the agreement? <laughs> the next board or yeah. commission in yeah. years, yeah. 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 years? I know. <laughs> uh, I think all we have to do is approve it and then let Ken and the attorneys. The mechanism. <laughs> yeah, yeah make figure it out who's going to pay for all the surveyors. <laughs> uh, not to worry, Alan. And Ken has already told us the town is going to do that. Well, you know, part of, part of my resistance to that too is that you know I feel responsible for expenses that we incur. I mean, you know, we have a fiduciary responsibility to the town as well. But you know, be that as it may, um, this it does it isn't going to come out of our budget. It will it come is. out of the town. Exactly. So. So um, the next steps then, once we get an approval of this and get the bounds in the ground and everything, then um, I guess at that point, we can talk about what we're going to do in there about, as far as getting the DPW in to do some clearing and you know that sort of thing. Um, okay, anything else on the Pocus Line Swan? I was really hoping. That we could have a springtime celebration. I was looking forward to that. Praise of all, glass of all. <laughs> That's right. Our June meeting will be the eighth year when uh, Jeannie Hicks came in and uh, Helen. Yeah. Um, so we're going to ask the DPW to uh, fence, uh, clear. When we get an agreement. Yeah, well, yeah. well, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a look once we see the bounds in the ground and um, go ahead and take a look and see what, you know, just if there are any vegetation, any trees we want to keep and that sort of thing and mark them and then uh, we'll contact DPW and see if they can get the crew yeah. out there. Yeah, we'll. I, for one, am not going to make a decision on trees. I'm going to look at his name is Dale Gary. Isn't he? I'm going to look at the town's arbors and, and say, those that we should keep, tell us. But remember, tree roots will disturb the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brandon okay. Forrester, mm -hmm. the guys would love to test out in here, too. Great. So, uh, next item is the monument. Uh, restoration project. Mm -hmm. um, we do have five copies of this. Oh, did we get a copy? Wow. You, you printed five copies of it? No, I they, 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 they must have been they, they, they showed up. Yeah, up. yeah I, I don't know where they came from. We got an email from Erica saying, okay, can one of the guys with DPW oh, come pick these up? Yeah, exactly. So it has Every all the one. detail in the, we did see the um, online version. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm looking at the online version all yeah. along. Yeah. Yeah. So we do have uh, hard copies. There are a couple here, I think Paul brought in for, 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 for my copy. I think Erica has one and so. If, if so we, this is ours. Yeah. Okay. So okay. They, they are available. Yes. <laughs> I mean, once worked in a library, available is available if 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 it's really available. Where can we put a copy? Do you think um, the Athenaeum would like a copy? Do you think uh, in the registrar's office is the appropriate place for a copy? Uh, NHA. Well, the NHA Research Library is closed for quite a long time now for building work. So the suggestion that we give them anything would not be that would be yeah. using it. Uh, okay. Um, good question. Right now, there's a box of, I think there are four more plus this one on top of that file cabinet back there. So I, I think Lee's point is well taken, though. I know. That I, avail availability is nice. Um, yeah. And whether it 
any one of those institutions. I don't know about the town building. They're, they're, they have a hard time storing what they've got. But, yeah, exactly. Um, and we're the cemetery commission. Right. So I would think here, that that's not exactly accessible to the public. Um, I, I think that it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a copy in the town building, and if the town clerk would mm -hmm. accept it. Well, that's an idea. Uh, Erica does uh, have she a, copy. a copy. She has she a, copy a copy there. So we can add the original copy to the Cemetery Commission web page. Oh, I love that idea. The well, people can just go on there, yeah. you know, from all that it's oh, always yeah, held. Right. Yeah, yeah right. that's a great idea. Because right. as far as the hard I, I, I love I don't know why. I feel like that either the NHA or the Athenaeum, though, you know, they're put it in a card catalog. People will know it's there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's an idea. All right. Well, I'll talk to uh, Anne and see if mm -hmm. she has room. <laughs> um, yeah, that's an idea. Just always knowing that one day it will all be fixed. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I know. Be a <laughs> Uh, yes. Um, okay, so in terms of the project itself, the monument restoration project, uh, we're going to meet at New North. Uh, yeah, New North. On old the, North. Old North. Old North. I'm sorry. Old Monday, North. At Monday at ten. On Monday at ten. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we'll take a look there. That will give us uh, some follow up. Uh, because I think Walter, isn't he, does he have it on his list to do um, um, Quaker Cemetery? Of course. He does. He's queued. But we, once the funds become available, uh, right. okay, I'll, that's I'll, because it's been more than 30 days, I'll reach out to him, make sure that the quote he provided me exactly. back when is it's still good. You know, I, don't know, I assume the cost materials haven't gone through the roof. And right. exactly. since we got the quote, what customary to ask, and then we can proceed with that. And then. Okay. We'll look at you know whatever funds we felt yeah. become available to start looking at the bigger cemeteries. Walter is the same guy that did Old North. Yes. Okay. What happens? Sorry. What happens in situations like the stones that are have fallen or the repair didn't hold up? Like what recourse do we have or to Walter? Or I think there'd be uh, if we ask him to come back to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So like when next time they're back. Uh, they, yeah, they, but they I can also back. ask him if we want. Uh, if we have questions for him, I can ask him to join our May meeting. Yes. Via yeah, Zoom. So, oh, that would be great. You know, yeah. he, he's very, he reads our minutes. Yeah. Okay. You know, every, every, every week. So he always knows what, you know, kind of what's going on. Because he, he reached out to me about a couple things. Oh, I saw the minutes, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. yeah so he's very yeah. in tune with everything. Uh, he's a great guy, very easy to work with. And so if you had questions about any particular stones, maybe you, if, you, if we took pictures, exactly. from the, send, yeah. send them to me so I can pull up for him. Yeah. Yeah, the stone repair. He might be able to say this is the best repair we could. We don't recommend doing anything further because it could deter you make the stone. Because I finally sent the photo I right. took to you. So I, I I've got a photo I should send it. And that'll be in the yeah. minutes of our field trip. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and, if, and if he's in town and he wants to meet us up there at uh yes, he, he he doesn't have a house out there, so he is sometimes on the island and off. I can take a reach out. I don't know Perfect. if we'll be here. Monday. Yeah, no, that would be great. Notice, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, from LMC Contracting. He might be here. He's in Providence. Yeah, no, he's the he's the owner of Walter Trust. He's I've, the owner of the company. I've talked to him uh, back when we were just at some point, and he does seem to be very you know responsive, and the fact that he reads our minutes and all that sort of thing. So great. Well, good. So, um, if you uh, will contact and let them know we're going to meet at uh, Old North on the seventeenth, and at ten, <laughs> then um, you know that would be great. If not, I mean, we'll meet up there and then do whatever yeah. we want to do. So, good. All right. So, as far as the um, monument restoration project, the other four cemeteries. We have um, Quaker Cemetery is next on the list. Once we do the financing, we will figure out where the money is going to come from. And then, of course, the next step on that project of 
monument restoration project is we need more funding. That will mean we'll need to uh, make a CPA application. Um, and I I don't remember what their timeline is. Early September. Yeah, it, it, it falls right around the capital. You know, timeline, so end of August, September. So we'll need to have the, the proposal in prior to that, correct? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we can ask him, Ken is on the, the CP. CP yeah, he's exactly. Chair. He's the chair. So we can ask him the timeline and exactly. everything else. Well, I, chat, I chatted with Ken and he said, oh, just call our staff person and she can send you a, either a blank application or a copy of your previous application. And so, um, like the copy, you know, I mean, because realistically, the unit we just expended the funds fast, you know, more than we thought. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're so we might be able to almost re represent the initial application, you know, maybe showing the work that's that's exactly. been done. Right. And now that we have, now that we know, have an idea of what cost is going to be, and the surveys and all, you know, the big exactly. work has been done. And I've got ballpark numbers for what it'll cost to finish. The rest of it, we know exactly how much to go back and ask for. Great. Okay. All right, so that will be on our um, yeah, future agenda as far as getting that together. But the uh, project itself, um, whenever, assuming we get approved for the funds and so on, we'll deal with that. Right. Um, I was reading over my dead body. I read the book. I was. I thought it was really interesting. It is a really interesting book. Isn't yeah, it? it was fascinating. At the at the beginning, he was talking about what his interests, what got him interested in cemeteries, and I realized that um, all those same things he was talking about as a kid. I used to. You know, I grew up in a college town up in Ohio, and they had this great cemetery. And there was a creek that ran through it. It was just sort of a place with, you know, as a eight or 10 year old kid, it was just great to kind of hang out in there. And there were all sorts of, you know, all these statues and all that sort of thing. Um, anyway, it got me to thinking about our long-term vision for the town cemeteries here in Nantucket. Um, our cemeteries, because they're all old, <laughs> We, you know, they're already more or less defined in terms of the kind of cemetery and that sort of thing. But um, with the monument restoration project that we'll be doing, once we get the monuments in place, um, I think we might want to take a look at what other things we might do as far as any improvements to the cemeteries themselves. I'm not, I don't have any particular concepts or, you know, we don't want to have big pearly gates or anything like that in the cemeteries, but, um, you know, to just sort of begin thinking about what we might want to do as far as a cemetery, a long-term cemetery improvement plan. Some years ago, I believe there was Tuppence and Money, Tuppence and Alice Money, and they irrigated part of Prospect Hill Cemetery. So part of it was green and part of it got parched in the summer. And I heard a lot of negative comment from Nantucketers about the idea of irrigating cemetery. Um, they, they thought it was inappropriate. Some people said, well, I'm very bad. I don't want water on my head. <laughs> um, but you know, that, that's, that's a possible improvement, but I don't think it's one that would be welcomed. I know there are individual lots there that have individual irrigation systems. Exactly. I used to maintain a few of them uh, yeah. when I worked for Sconsa Gardner. I know Waterworks is being there, and all the individual plots right. had their own systems tied into the main water lines. Yeah. Um, so, I, sorry, no, I know St. Mary's has thought that. Uh, letting people add their own kind of irrigation. I don't know. I don't remember the reason. Oh, well, yeah, what about us doing perpetual care? Yeah. So if you're, you know, if you've got a fixed fee for care for the cemetery, and it's based upon it. Basically, by the time it gets to be August, you're mowing it once every six weeks. All of a sudden, having to go and maintain, you know, a lush green lawn to change your. Uh, I would say it's a maintenance nightmare. We should 
we should ignore it or forget about it. But I think that Alan's point, though, about a long term range plan, I mean, some of these cemeteries certainly were envisioned as parks, others were seen as more artistic or whatever. It's just interesting and to think about do we want benches? I mean, I think yeah, that well, it's 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 well, uh, right. I mean, I think it's so so interesting. Actually, our decision over the pulp is about having no flush stones. Mm -hmm. That is, in fact, yeah, a decision. Well, um, I was, so. was going to suggest, Alan, that one of the things that we should be looking at are lane lanes and uh, walkways um, that exactly. are, are clearly enough marked that people know that they're not necessarily walking the graves. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think especially as we get ready for Newtown. Right. I think right. that you know our long term vision uh, for Newtown. Yeah. yeah. Is, that's a, is that's a good point. That, that's yeah. Possibly if there's areas to define, you know, how to define, you know, like, you know, say Old North. There's kind of an unofficial roadway in, but there's an necessarily an official parking area. Exactly. You know, is there you know, same thing with like pulps? Is there a way, is there a space where we could open a split rail so you're not necessarily parking right on the side of Pulpus Road with the traffic? Kind of move that, you know, into oh, the space man. a little bit. So yeah, that was Pulpus, we had thought that up and we did create probably our best right because we had enough parking there. We own a big chunk of the the, the swing snack property. We, you know, there's that diagonal line that goes yeah. up like this. That's why we can't use those last couple of. Um, we can. Uh, we can had still standing on that. Yeah, that that was our original proposal for expanding the parking or putting parking in there. Was just you know work something out in that area. We ended up with a. You know, the strip that we have, which, but, which is yeah. good, but I, I mean, I think you're talking about something more a vision of the future, exactly. Um, exactly. Um, in, in terms of the fence and pulpits, I think we have, whether written or unwritten, compromise with the uh, adjacent landowner that the fence line is continuous, even though the property line mm -hmm. goes uh, inward. Um, yeah. indeed, indeed, there's a bound mm -hmm. and a little surveyor's tape where the corner is. Mm -hmm. E e but it, 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 it still represents a reasonable approach to parking. It does. And I think for, for, it can accommodate four vehicles. And then if there are additional ones for some occasion, they have to be on the other side of the street. Yeah. But that full out that has been created can accommodate four medium sized vehicles. Mm -hmm. Well, again, we're talking about a longer range vision of what we might do, and these are all good ideas. Mm -hmm. These are all things that we might want to consider. One of the other things uh, we might need to consider is the fact that the uh, we're running out of space, even with the additional hundred and whatever lots, and plus with the land swap, but we got even some more lots out in Pulpus. Pulpus is the only cemetery where we no, we have uh, okay. space. Uh, the only in the all the other cemeteries, unless somebody has a certificate or a you know whatever from years ago. Yes, and that brings us back to Newtown. Yeah. Yes, and um, I'm trying to think of a metaphor that's not too trite and overused. Can worms? Um, mare's nest, whatever. Um, but what ground penetrating radar we have suggests that we are walking on graves no matter where we go. Mm -hmm. uh, and that also um, throws some doubt on the notion that there might be a lot of space for new graves. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we have never finished the ground penetrating radar, and it would be wonderful if we found a spot where there um, weren't. It's a two-step process, and it may take as long as Palpus. But we need for um, the town to validate that Newtown goes to the fence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And once we do that, we can ask DPW to clear enough of a corner up by Calpon Lane that we can get a GPR through there. Yeah. I, I don't know that we need to GPR uh, the balance of the cemetery. We know where the graves are. We've done the laneways and to our distress discovered that they're um, on top of all kinds of graves. Right. Um, 
So I'm hopeful that that last corner um, and like belling the cat, who's going to go to Norm Moore and say you've got two dogs buried on the cemetery? Oh, we talk about that. My thought is those dogs should rest in peace. Heaven <laughs> sakes. We we spend our. I mean, we've been spending a lot of time expanding what we have right. and trying to make the most and exactly. maximize everything what we have. How do you um, get new land? Um, I spoke with Andrew Vorse, this was some years ago, um, when we were sort of going through this. And I mentioned to Andrew, um, you know, this was early on when we were just sort of uh, about cemetery space. And I, it was at the, at the point when I realized that we had no available space in any of the nine town cemeteries. That, that's when we started to you know, Pulpus, and that's how we worked out Pulpus. Um, when I spoke with Andrew, and as I said, this is probably 10, maybe 15 years ago, um, he acknowledged the need, and what he, his suggestion was the Boy Scout camp. <clears throat> I reminded him that the Pivot League had placed, <laughs> or, uh, you know, had transferred and you know and if it's ever used for any other purpose that we right. immediately to the city please exactly oh, well, there. Well, and some sometimes it pays not to kick a wasp's nest i'm not putting that in a minute <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, was that great. 15 years ago he said that yeah it was yeah. at least well, i would say at least 15 yeah years no ago. it's um <clears throat> but, remember at one time andrew thought that um, yeah. the laneway that is there now um it should be a road. And mm -hmm. that was 1998 is when Newtown was subdivided, yeah. which I think was a huge mistake. But yeah. I know. What, what will be said though, when one day we've got Cow Pond Lane, done everything, it's full, mm -hmm. and Pulpus is full, mm -hmm. and um, someone, yeah. probably we yeah. won't be here doing this, <laughs> but someone will say, did you guys ever consider like beyond that? Where would you have another place, exactly. cemetery. Yeah. We're yeah. Here, yeah. Some of us at least have been mulling that for quite a long time. Yeah. Would the town give us a piece of land somewhere else? And considering the value of land, it seems very unlikely that the town would set aside another piece of town-owned land for burials. Well, I think if we made a case for it, I mean, because right well, until we opened up Pulpus, the only real alternative was uh, um, St. Mary's or uh, Crossman Jail. And though they still have lots of spaces in both of those cemeteries. In fact, they've been expanding those and so on. The issue, of course, was price. That's one of the main reasons. Well, we it's price, price the... for Prospect Hill, and it's whether one is Catholic for yes, St. Mary's. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I'm out and about on all over the island yeah. for different things and stuff. Um, and when I go through the, the paper and I see what the town is transferring, you know, the strips of land that they're doing from the yard sale and all that sort of stuff, um, there are some fairly large tracts of land that the town controls. And um, Usually what happens, either if if the town can't think of a use for them at the moment, you know, that's the thing that you know, a lot of the long range thinking that often happens. But um, I think for something like a cemetery, that if they were on the lookout for property and so on that they own, um, the land bank has taken advantage of, of some of these things. You know, whenever the town has property that um, usually has waterfront or access to the water or something like that. Um, so I think that the way to, to approach that would be to go to Andrew Vorse and explain that we are looking for a piece of land that would be suitable for a cemetery. And so, because he seems to be the person who you know has 
I won't say the map at his head, but uh, oh, it's true. Close to your own pulse. Um, Alan, I'm going to suggest that after one of us, namely you, discusses the issue with Andrew, we find out whether um, he can attend one of our meetings by a Zoom if he chooses after he's had a chance to think about um, candidate properties mm -hmm. so that we would have a uh, discussion, not not, not a lecture, but a, um, right. a, a discussion uh, on uh, possibilities. Right, well, I think that you're right. That's the first step is to contact Andrew, uh, maybe Nathan Porter too, because Nathan has a, a good sense of you know what's available, what the town owns, and you know that sort of thing. He can pull up detailed maps of you know what's available and so on. So I think that's the place to start is to uh, raise the question with Andrew and say, look, you know, we're looking ahead to the future. Um, the town has a responsibility to deal with burials. That's part of you know the municipal responsibility. <laughs> Just like the town has a responsibility <laughs> for maintaining a skilled nursing facility. Yeah. Um, well, I know. I'm going to say, let's change the verb just a little bit. The town has assumed responsibility because it's not inherent in municipal man uh, government that um, municipalities own cemeteries. It's a, it's a tradition here in Massachusetts. Right. And, in I mean, and, and the obvious point is that Prospect Hill is private. Yeah, right. yeah exactly. And in reading over my dead body, um, he talks about how the cemeteries came about. And again, it was the responsibility of the municipality to provide a burial space, whether it be a potter's or whatever. You know, times have changed. I mean, you know, back during the you know, 1800s, you know, there were diseases and all sorts of things where they had, uh, there, there was a health issue involved. In to, 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 to be fair, even to this day in, in countries like England and France, it's the churches that are responsible for the cemeteries. Right. And in New York City, my hometown, um, the city assumed responsibility once it was decided that there would be no more interments below, I think, uh, exactly. 96th Street. Um, and, and that led to a number of uh, burial grounds in mid-north Manhattan before they went across the river to Brooklyn. Like it. That's good. good. Okay. Well, I'd like to bring up one other thing mm -hmm. before we sure. finish up. Um, Barbara and I have been going to multi-organizational meetings once a month about um, it started out about whether we could devise walking tours sponsored by various organizations that would give more representation to people of color. And that just seemed like an enormous amorphous thing. And as I understood in our last meeting, we're getting down to, well, what can we do right now? And um, because 2025 will be the bicentennial of the African Meeting House, it was decided last time that we would ask the town to declare the year 2025, the whole year, as the year of the African meeting house on Nantucket, mm -hmm. and that we would have various activities throughout the year. And the NHA is interested in some kind of walking tour of the colored cemetery. Um, so we've been discussing that, and it would be really nice to have a video that would be permanent that people could access from anywhere. And then the issue was about two, two white ladies leading it would be so good. And Barbara had this brilliant idea that, no, we could recruit a lot of members of the community at different points in the colored cemetery, high school students, people of color, whatever, so that it wouldn't be any one person or two people conducting a walk through the cemetery, but it would be a video 
of spots in the cemetery with somebody interpreting that spot. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if we could do that, we would obviously have to get funding videos cost a bunch of money. Um, but I would sort of hope that the cemetery commissioners would think it's a good idea. And um, I thought at our next meeting, which is May when you won't be there, that I would ask the help of the NHA in exploring potential funding sources. Yeah, they did talk about mass chairs and you don't want to- Yeah, Charlie. Around. Yeah, so I, I dropped the ball. I was hoping to have uh, Florencia Rulo here. Uh, this week, I, I think I emailed you, Alan, in March. I forgot to follow up to get her onto the agenda. Uh, she and I had a conversation about about this video, actually, um, and creating, you know, getting onto the website, getting onto YouTube, and having a QR code in the cemetery. Um, so I spoke, to, I called her just before this meeting to see if she might be able to come in last minute. Unfortunately, she was tied up. So we're going to invite her to the uh, the May meeting to, to talk to us about this. So she. Produces, you know, she's doing all the videos for the town meeting, this sort of stuff. So as far as cost, this is something that she can do as smart as the town for us. Well, well it, it, it's the town is also the community preservation. Um, yeah, they're on the committee. We this 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 big this committee is being you mm -hmm. name it, they're on it. Yeah, Florencia is the one who publishes the um, the a newsletter from Libby every third the. Mm -hmm. Every month, yeah, and all like those videos for town meetings and all the articles. So anything that's posted to YouTube goes through Florence here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this thing might require <clears throat> a bit more. Uh, the, the videos that the NHA did, like a walk up Main Street and so forth, were done by Channel 18. And um, mm -hmm. the, two, the two women who conducted them said that it was, it involved a whole lot of takes. It was a lot more than just. People walking up in the street. No, I think this is a, a great link. I mean, you know, yeah. someone in the town. Yeah, it could it could be a start too, yeah. just because she and I had a she and I had a comment sort of a little more in-depth conversation to kind of pause so let's let the commission decide because there was a talk whether we actually had um, people in the cemetery for just you know, or if it was a voiceover. So we gave her kind of a list of, of how because it gave an order of how you tell the story of the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So she could go in there with you, just take Kind of video of where you are, and then do a voiceover, yeah. and that could almost be, that could, could kind of be the that first pass to just start raising awareness, and yeah, then possibly and then be build a build up on it, get, get that up first on the website, and then as we start to you know find you know but, people, you know, people in the neighborhood to, to bring in to, to talk about this. But, but this, I think, would be really celebratory about Nantucket Black history, and I just when Barbara brought up the idea of having people of different ages and different backgrounds present to talk about different um, stones or groups of stones. Mm -hmm. It just struck me as brilliant mm -hmm. and exactly what we should and, do. And you know, the thought was that Brandon and I would probably do a lot of the script writing um, and the NHA is on board. So this, that, I think this is wonderful because we have another piece of the pie that right. and we're looking for, you know, 2000, 25. So it's pretty quick. Yeah, it's right. Pretty quick. But this, but even this first with just the voiceover could be, a, you know, that could be, I mean, you guys, you could probably tell the story. Yeah, but the problem is it's being raised that Barbara and I are two white women and that <laughs> can, that, that can raise some hackles. Yeah. So, so we're going to sell this with the um, Museum of African American History in Boston yeah. and all. Yeah, and the, the thought was that we even just be a voiceover. So we could, you know, we could. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you, can, you can almost. Well, I don't you, but you can also. You, I, anybody can do the voiceover. Yeah. So if we wanted to do that as as just the first I, I think, pass with video, we could we could find somebody to do it. It's very. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. That's it, again, nice. it's, you know, it's, it's, it's well, an avenue. Well, yeah. You can outsource that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know they're talking about reaching out to mass tourism and mm -hmm. you know the, okay. the all things beyond my pay grade. Of knowing where there's sources of funding. But I, I've decided, you know, Barbara and I were talking about re um, constituting for a couple of years the, the Friends of the African Meeting House on now talking, and Barbara's like, oh! but frankly, I, I'm quite willing to say I would kind of clear my desk and for now 
into 2025, I would make it my, my primary project. Uh, um, I mean, I have a birthday coming up on Sunday. I look at how much time I have left and what I ought to do. And a two-year project looks a whole lot more <laughs> Yeah. I think I'm the oldest one. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's great. I think, I think knowing the cemetery commission, because the cemetery, you know, is not the, does not belong in Boston. It belongs to the oh, yeah. That's right. As a matter of fact, oh, we it. have discussed yeah. the fact that the Justice gave permission to fence it, but they did not formally set it off to any personal organization. We're, we're of the opinion that it's probably a little tiny piece left of the common and undivided land. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, yeah. one or two of the cemeteries have have been recorded, but um, I think that one certainly is not. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I think that's a great idea. And uh, as far as information about the cemeteries as well, one of the things that the land bank has been doing recently. As we've been naming our properties, we have now 19 different signs, parking areas, and there's a map of the property. But do we have the QR code that, uh, you know, and all you have to do is take a picture of it if mm -hmm. you have a camera and then just tap on the thing. It'll take you right to the description of that particular property and that sort of thing. So the technology, <laughs> and I, I don't, you know, it's a little bit for the youngers. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I know. So anyway, I think these are all good ideas in terms of, uh, again, developing some sort of a long-term vision for the cemetery. So, okay, I think um, number seven, the latest copies of, uh, I mentioned that earlier, was I'd say initially when I was putting the agenda together, I just got an email from Erica saying she had copies, and I thought that they were copies of the, the five cemeteries, no, the the nine cemeteries um, that the other group had done and so on, but it turns out it was these. So. Mm -hmm. um, did you, who brought this? You I, I brought it to hand around to other people. I've finished it. Finished it. Um, I'm not going to have time to read it before I go, so I'm going to pass this to someone else. Who has everybody read Over My Dead Body? Yeah, well, yeah. uh, Scotty, I just gave it to Scotty. Okay. So. Anyone want to read this one? The archaeology one there? No, you don't want to read it. Well, I want to read it, but I'm just not going to commit. Okay. Right now. So it looks like Alan gets it. I will take it. Read it in June. Okay, well, I'll get it back to you then. Do you want to? I've read that one. Okay. So well, the next meeting, I'll bring it back. Right. It was pretty interesting. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think you're the last person in the group. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. Would you like to read it sometime? Right. It's mine right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's mine. Anyway, so that was pretty interesting. It's very readable. It's fun. And then we hope to get him over here. So. OK, old, new, other business. Anything the piece? Uh, piece in the gray markers are in. Oh, excellent. Don't tell. Thanks. A1 form, A13. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. If you give it, bless, oh, yeah. you give it the blessing, I'm good with it. And I take it this is one of the stainless steel. Yeah. And then I also have. Case of these plus the case of the nails and the pens. How big is the box, mate? Uh, not checking into it. I'll tell you, it's on my, it's on my, yeah, they're all, they're all stacked up, but it weighs. Yeah, and how many people to lift it? Yeah, uh, well, it flattened the time, you know, if they put all three boxes on a belly, they come in stamped or do you have to stamp? No, we they stamped them for us, uh, thankfully. Yeah, I, I, no, I see it. Yeah, I, I hand, I hand wrote all of these, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, uh, so they so they stamped them all. So very right, right. So that that brings up one other item. Then we need to find a time to put those in the ground. <laughs> um, well, does DPW do that? Um, I suppose. 
what what I'm picturing, mm -hmm. okay, uh, is doing it. We're using a line, taking a rope, marking off the sections, and and literally putting stakes in the ground. Something that um, two people could probably do, two or three people, or whatever. And I was kind of thinking that um, I would do it. Anybody else who wanted to come along could do it, or I would see if I could round up somebody, another person to do that. I'm thinking um, sometime in May would be a good time to get those in the ground. And when does, we don't have to wait for the land swap. No, no, this, no this these, is all are, these are all on. These are, uh, our, yeah, these are all on our way, so we don't have to wait for the lands to do that. So, um, all right. Well, now that we know that the the things are yeah. in, um, um, I'll, well, I'll put it on the agenda for our May meeting, and we'll try and we'll figure out how we're going to do that. Okay, is there any other instance to come before the commission this afternoon? If not, I declare we are at the end of our agenda and the meeting was in. Wonderful. Thank you for the book. I'll bring it back in the next one.